Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Ask Dr. Renee show. I am your host, Dr. Renee. And if you've never watched the show before, it's here to motivate and inspire you to live the life you deserve, especially in these times. Um, so today our guest is Shanti Das. She is all things amazing. She was actually on one of my very first shows. I want to say one of the first 10 shows. So this is like number 80 something show. So it's really great to have her back. But she's done so much since then. So we're going to talk about that. And you see my shirt, Shanti. Yes. <laughs> I, I just had to put my button on because you can't really see it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't really see it that good. No. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So Shanti, if you don't know, I mean, I tell every, all my friends. But Shanti is, I always say, she's the one that brought Outcast to the masses. Aww. So she was a part of LaFace Records marketing team. And so they did, you know, obviously besides Outcast, Tony Braxton, TLC, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You've even seen her if you've watched any of the documentaries because Outcast celebrated anniversary recently. She was in those documentaries. So that is Shanti Das. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. I'm so proud of you, little sis. Thank you so much. I um so I so I always tell the story how we meet because some people didn't see the other episode. So Shanti and I, Shanti and I have a mutual friend. He's like a brother to both of us. And he sent me her book, The Hip Hop Professional, because everyone knows, well, should know that I was in the music industry as far as doing PR and booking and management for years. And so he sent me her book because that's obviously the industry she was in. And I read the book in a day and was like, wow, that was really great. So I go to my friend's wedding, Alicia Butterfield Jones, who's also been a guest on the show. And I see Shanti, we were poolside the day before the wedding. And so I went and said to her, I said, you have no idea who I am, but, and she said, no, he talks about you all the time. I know who you are. And so the two of us ended up hanging out all weekend and we've been best friends, we've been good sisters and friends ever since. She's a mentor. She, um, so I just, I love that she's doing what she's doing because it's helping so many people. You know, the record industry, obviously everyone knows music is one of my loves, but what she's doing now with Silence of Shame, which we're gonna talk about today, is amazing. And then she also just started a new um, campaign, Yay Wellness, that you have to check out that is really, really cool too. So we're gonna get into all of that. And then of course, we have to talk about what's going on in the world because, I mean, we have to, because yeah. it is going on and we all know what's going on and we can't <laughs> avoid it. So we are going to discuss that as well. So Shanti, first, I really wanna know, um, first of all, I think because Silence of Shame is so amazing, but I think in this time, when I keep telling everyone, please come out of this better than you came in it, I think that some people have a nonprofit maybe that they want to start. So I think that the information of how you started Silence of Shame could be beneficial to somebody out there who's been, you know, had the inkling that they needed to start a nonprofit, but for whatever reason hadn't pulled the trigger. So how did you end up pulling the trigger on Silence of Shame? So uh, I walked away from my job in the music industry, like at the end of 09, uh, beginning of 2010, came back home to Atlanta, started doing some music consulting, but I also started doing a lot of work just in the community. Um, so what I tell people is, you know, if you've never really done a lot of work in the nonprofit space, just kind of start, you know, volunteering and doing work in your community first and foremost. So you can really surround yourself with other like-minded individuals that are doing the same thing um, that you're passionate about. And so, I mean, I started doing everything from, you know, backpack drives to literally feeding the homeless on Cortland and Pine Streets in Atlanta when, you know, a lot of our homeless population, um, unfortunately, were living in those parking lots before they were bought and closed. And, you know, I did um, those, um, drives to collect toiletries for the shoebox campaign for the United Way. I really just kind of immersed myself um, um, from a service uh, perspective, if you will, in the city of Atlanta and just started giving back a lot. So um, at the time I had a company called Press Reset and I would use that company and that brand to galvanize my friends just to start helping. So long story short, ended up forming the Hip Hop Professional Foundation in 2017 because of all the work that we were doing in the community. And then I started this movement, Silence the Shame, um, to erase stigma around mental health and wellness uh, as a result of my own personal struggles. And then we kind of rebranded 
Um, but I say all that to say is I, I was giving back and I was trying to be of service to my community before I even thought about forming a nonprofit. It really kind of just came naturally because I felt like, well, OK, God, and not to impose my faith on anyone, but I was like, OK, God, this seems natural to me. Um, even though I worked in music, I have a real love of giving back and helping other people. What I will say to anyone thinking about starting a nonprofit is, you know, volunteer, get involved, but also like learn as much as you can about the nonprofit space because it's like running a for profit entity in some ways because it's still a business. And it, you know, it's been a learning curve for me, you know, over the last three or four years doing this work and being the executive director. So I had to, you know, put the accounting hat on. And some of that I'm really just now learning three or four years in of how to properly fundraise, you know, making your you making sure you get um, a certificate uh, to be approved to fundraise in the state that you work and live in. Uh, it's so many little things. So I would just suggest, you know, going to your chamber of commerce and finding out like, is there like for here in Atlanta, there's a Georgia Center for Nonprofits, which is a wonderful resource for nonprofits. So, you know, go on those type of websites and learn as much as you can about the business side of the nonprofit space because you want to be able to properly apply for grants. And even when you get that grant money in, it's a lot that you can do with it and that you can't do with it. So you need to be compliant um, with those uh, foundations and, and corporations that actually give you that grant money, learning how you need to fundraise just in general so you can have non-restricted operational funds so you can hire a staff and you know get a brick and mortar space or <clears throat> get a membership to a co-working space that you and your team can work out of. It's so much, Dr. Renee, from a business perspective, and that, but that's like the biggest thing that I can hopefully, um, you know, impart to your listeners so that they understand. Like, take time, set goals for yourself, create strategies, um, and, and utilize this time as best as you can. Because I, I was looking at a friend's post the other day, and she she said something I thought was interesting. Because so many of us have, you know, we want to provide hope in this time, right? That's one of the most important things we can do during a pandemic, but what we also have to realize is people are genuinely struggling. You know, they don't have jobs, they, you know, it's hard for them to get by. So, you know, it's tough for them to even think about another business that they want. Right. To so first and foremost, I want to bestow grace upon anyone that's looking and listening today, because we know it's hard. We know you're struggling. We too are struggling at times. So let's not make light of you know, how easy it is to just start a business yeah. and get things going. And so I uh, was really grateful to my friend for posting that because although we've all been feeling it and, and we've been trying to empower and inspire so much that we also have to take time to just breathe um, and work through any emotional health and wellness challenges that we may be going through to get us through the other side so that we can feel like our best selves um, to be able to want to start these new side hustles and new gigs. Um, but it's a lot going on just in terms of our daily lives, of being able to feed our children, homeschool our children, um, and just get by. And those that live alone, you know, the isolation can really be a lot. So, um, you know, grateful that you're doing the work that you're doing. There's so many people going live now through a ton of uh, platforms. And I see artists, musicians, and celebrities. Yes letting fans you know into their live stream which we didn't see a lot of that in the past um so just you know understanding that we are humans first and that we all need grace mercy and favor in our lives right now definitely so silence the shame like you said is silence the shame against mental health and um because she is a marketing person that's why you know she has the shirt on and then i have this one but she has just like everyone laughs at me and all my ass, Dr. Renee stuff. <laughs> um, I, I get it, obviously. I, I learned from the best. <laughs> so you have to, you know, you have to get it out there. Now, what really blew me away recently was Silence of Shame. We watched a million little things. My sister and my mother and I love that show. Okay. And Rome from Million Little Things, I said, Lish, did you see he had a Silence of Shame shirt? <laughs> and posted yeah. online. That was so awesome. That was, I have to thank my good friend, James Lopez, who is president of Will Packer Productions. And James and I were former colleagues in the music business together. And I reached out to him and, cause I'm a fan and I watched the show as well. And I was like, oh my God, I love to be able to get, 
you know, to Rom and see if one, he would, you know, just learn about silence of shame and possibly be willing to support. And you know how it is. It takes time, Dr. Renee, to like yeah. cultivate relationships. You know, we, yeah. we all go through this. Um, and so, you know, it took almost maybe eight months or more to even just be able to connect with him because he was busy filming. Um, but he right. did finally return my email and, you know, I told him everything about silence of shame because initially I wanted to just have him on the podcast and we still want to do that. But I said, hey, let me just send you a shirt, you know, and we go from there. So the cool thing is he got the shirt. And then earlier this year, he actually posted a video wearing his shirt, yeah. talking about silence of shame. So, right. So that was like the first point of um, social media connection and, 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 and activity that he did for us. And then he's been away with his family um, on a vacation in like a, like a remote island where he's totally social distancing and being safe. Um, and so there's self quarantine there. But the funny thing was when I looked, I was like, oh my God, he's actually wearing our shirt on vacation. And he said, I'm rocking my favorite tea, but nobody can see it because <laughs> we're social distancing. Um, so that was really cool. And it was also um, right before like um, the season was about, the mid season was about to um, come back and, and premiere. So we were able to post in support and he's just, you know, he's a, a great supporter and we're hoping that one day we can make him an, an official ambassador of the organization. So shout out Ram and, and, and what you're doing and a million little things in the ABC Network is such an amazing show because it really addresses, oh, wow, right it addresses mental health in a way that we don't always get to see, right? I think on television, um, because not only did one of the, the main characters initially take his own life, it kind of takes you through the mental health and wellness of all the other characters, how they deal with the suicide, and just some very real moments that I think a lot of us can relate to, but we not we may not always know what to call it or how to look at it and and or even how to process it right in right. your friends and within your family. So right. you know, kudos to the writers on that show because I think they're doing a great job. Yeah, and so we're talking about Romani Malco. That's his real name. His character's Romani. Right. Yeah, Romani was on. Um, Act like a lady, think like a man, which is where the whole pack of questions comes yeah. in. Yes. Mm -hmm. So he was in that. And Romney is West Indian, like we are. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, I forgot where I learned that. But yeah. Nice. So um, but yeah, he um his character alone, because you know, I I always talk about in our community and uh, most of my health stuff that I do is with health disparities in the black community. Mm -hmm. His character alone, talking to his dad about his depression and about his, you know, all the issues that he was going through was really, really great. I, I just it really was because it struck yeah. a nerve with his father. And you think about like, you know, secrets that we keep in the family or things that we don't discuss in, in particularly in African-American community. Right. Um, and so his dad was really, um, how can I, his dad was being combative, if you will, um, and not really addressing um, uh, Romney when he talked about, um, you know, feeling depressed and everything he was going through when really, I think he, his dad probably saw a lot of his younger self in his son and just didn't know how to talk about it. Exactly. Know? Exactly. And so that was so I mean, we that was amazing. Just that whole interaction and the way that they brought that through was just just wonderful to see on screen, because wow. unfortunately, we do know that in our community, for whatever reason, it's just such a poo poo to go and talk to someone and to go mm -hmm. seek help. And mm -hmm. but you need to sometimes you need to get help. And in yeah. these times, especially if you need help, Please go seek help. You know how you can do it. You just have to use your phone. Shanti has some um, has a text number you can text, um, a suicide hotline, um, different kind of mental health, so that you can get help right where you're sitting. You can um, and actually, I look. I see our friend Dr. Erica Goodwin is watching. Dr. Erica, <laughs> we love you. Yes, Dr. <laughs> Erica is a psychiatrist. Yeah, uh, in the Atlanta. And I give out that, those info, those numbers real quick. Yes, so yes, yes. Yeah. and I'll type it as you say it. So the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is probably the one um, uh, national resource that everyone utilizes when they're in crisis. And it actually is a number that I called the night that I was contemplating taking my own life. So it is 1-800-273-TALK. You can call them and they can um, help de-escalate the crisis that you may be experiencing. Also, there is another great organization called the Crisis Text Line Organization. 
Um, and you can ch uh, Google them. It's crisistextline.org. But most um, larger mental health and wellness advocacy organizations have their own keyword. Um, and that's really just to kind of track to see how users are utilizing the information that's being shared from a resource perspective. Our key word at Silence the Shame is the word silence. So if you feel like you, you know, you're feeling really anxious in the times of what's going on with the quarantine and the pandemic, don't worry. You can text the word silence to 741-741. They will immediately connect you with a counselor. It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's strictly confidential. Now, this is important. It's important to note that this is not um, to replace therapy, right? Or to replace right. seeing your physician or your uh, psychiatrist, but it can help you through a moment of crisis. They'll talk to you um, and text back and forth. And then they can also refer you to licensed mental health professionals like a Dr. Erica Goodwin, who is in the Atlanta, Georgia area, um, and so forth. Um, also, psychologytoday.com is really great if you need help in terms of finding um, <clears throat> a therapist or psychiatrist in your area. I also like Dr. Joy's platform, Therapy for, for Black Girls, and it's not just for girls, but it can help um, those in uh, the African-American community, because oftentimes um, when you talk about finding the right licensed mental health care professional for you, um, and this is not for everybody, but some people find it easier to talk to someone who is either a part of their community or nationality because um, it's, it's a such thing called cultural competency. So when the physicians and the therapists and psychologists go at, through their trainings and, and all of their coursework, you know, they get trained in cultural competency, but it's not always necessarily the case. And so if you need if you're in the African-American community and you need to find someone who you feel like may be able to uh, better relate to you in terms of your cultural experiences, um, check out therapyforblackgirls.com. Also, NAMI.org is probably the largest um, mental health advocacy organization for all communities, all groups, all races, all sexes, all genders. Um, they do an amazing job. My friend Dan Gillison, who was at the American Psychiatric Association Foundation, is actually now the CEO of NAMI. So I'm excited and we're hoping to partner a lot more with them. Um, and then our friends over at Emory University School of Medicine just released a psychological wellness guide. Um, uh, Dr. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank here. Um, but the, the head of the brain health um, division over there is a good friend of Silence to Shame. And um, I, I um, recommend that you guys uh, Google is uh, or here's the address is www.psychiatry.emory.edu. And you can log on and get information regarding um, how to stay connected and how, you know, to reinvent yourself and how to foster wellness while you're at home um, through COVID-19. So it's a ton of resources out there, but those are right. kind of like some of the main ones that I go to. Awesome. So, um, so yeah, it's very important that you do realize there are resources out there. Um, you know, there, you don't have to do it alone. Um, and she did touch upon, you know, people like myself that are sitting here by ourselves. <laughs> It'll be four weeks tomorrow. <laughs> it is real out here, okay? So, um, so yeah, sitting here by myself, you know, it can be really challenging. Um, mm -hmm. Thankfully, I do have my psychologist. I can easily call her Good. if I need her. But I have friends and family. I'm trying to, you know, keep things going. I'm doing this. I am also... Um, <clears throat> keeping up with things that I normally do. I talked to Shanti the other day and I told her how me and my friend, we usually meet in, in person, but we can't. So we met via Zoom. We meet once a week and we check in, but we text all day, every day, just like, and she, just like my parent, my mom, I talk to her several times a day. I talk to my sister several times a day, especially a lot of you know that my father recently had a stroke and so he's in the hospital. So, you know, Obviously, communication is extremely important now, but I always talk to my parents, especially my dad. I talk to my dad umpteen times a day. So it is kind of strange that I'm not doing that, but he is getting better. So we're glad about that. But you're right. Communication is key. Um, and uh, like my mother is in a um, long term um, facility uh, for Alzheimer's. And I'm so excited that um, they've actually purchased iPads for the caregivers there. And so now I can schedule FaceTime with my mom once a week. So we actually have an appointment tomorrow 
at 1030 in the morning. So I get to see her beautiful face. Um, that has been really challenging for me not to be able to see my mom. Um, we live in different states, but, you know, I go up at least once a month to see her and not to be able to physically see her has really been tough. And then also for me, you know, I'm still going through the grieving process of losing my sister last year, which, you know, Renee, we talked about this a lot. You know how difficult this has been on me um, and our family. Because my sister was everything to me. And so, you know, I want to say to anyone out there that has experienced a loss during this time, um, you know, I, I feel for you because the grief process is hard enough. But having to lose someone through um, this pandemic and with COVID-19, you know, some families aren't able, well, not even some, most families are not able to have funeral proper funeral services that will allow family members and other friends and loved ones to attend because of the stay in order, um, you know, regulations as well as social distancing. And I've also been told that a lot of the hospitals are cremating some yeah. of the people pass away so that they don't have room. Well, they don't have room. And then also, I don't know if we know enough about the research in terms of, um, you know, oh, I know what you're saying. Yeah. and if they'll be able to, if someone, you know, comes in and sees a loved one and lays eyes on them or hands on them, if they'll be able to contract the virus or not. So it's just a lot. It's really heavy. Um, there is an organization, you know, it's from a Christian perspective. So if, if, if that is um, in direct conflict to your spiritual beliefs, I wouldn't recommend it. But there's an organization um, called Grief Share, and you can go onto their website, griefshare.org, and you can put in your zip code and find um, support there. I'm sure now they're probably doing grief support groups online um, and virtually, but that's a really great place. And then just some meditation apps um, are really good, um, just to kind of, if you feel like, maybe a panic attack is coming on. You might be thinking about your loved one or all this time inside someone that recently passed away. You're looking at old photos and you find yourself um, feeling really anxious. Um, try these meditation apps like Calm or Simple Habit or Headspace. A lot of them are offering like free 30 day trials. Yeah. And sometimes just breathing. There's a really simple um, breathing technique that uh, you can find through the yoga practice. Um, and it's just a four, four, eight breathing technique. So you breathe in for four seconds, excuse me, you hold it for four and then you do a long exhale for eight. So try doing, you know, like three reps of, of, um, maybe even 10 times, right. To see if that really helps and, and to recenter you. Um, some people need, um, longer reps Some people need shorter reps, but, you know, close your eyes and allow yourself to kind of process it and recenter yourself. Um, because certainly dealing with grief during this time is is really difficult, and not a lot of people are talking about that. Definitely. Um, one thing, Shanti is very transparent. She's been on, she's on Instagram, <laughs> she's on Facebook, and she's talked about the grieving process. She spoke about, I had never heard of grief share until she mentioned it last year, and I actually had mentioned it to a couple people that I felt like might need it, because I had never heard of it, and I said, well, you know, my friend is doing it, and she seems to think that this is a good thing. Maybe you should try that. But, um, but definitely please follow her. I have everything listed everywhere. She's tagged on Facebook and YouTube in the box. It has all of her links. But And actually, we also have a link to Silence of Shame if you'd like to make a donation. Yes. There is a link in there. It tells you how to do it. Five dollars. <laughs> yes. Help. Yeah. If it, like I said, dollar, five dollars, it will all help. And she really is trying to educate everyone about mental health so that we can silence the shame because it is just terrible that children have to be afraid to say, you know, I don't feel so good. Something's not right because mm -hmm. somebody's going to say something to them, even adults, you know. And um, I recently volunteered with her at one of the events that Alan Houston's Foundation Fizzle had in Chicago for All Star Week. And she had a wonderful teen panel. And it was so great to see a young lady who, her mother was very supportive. She told her mom, I don't feel well. Something's not right. Mm -hmm. And she sought mental health and now the mental health, uh, mental health and she got help. And she, she is now graduating this year. Unfortunately, I guess she might not have a prom or a, or a you know, a graduation because of what's going on here in Chicago mm -hmm. and everywhere else. But mm -hmm. she is graduating and this was her freshman year. I think that she was having these troubles. So she made it and she's, you know, not ashamed to talk about the fact that she did have these difficulties and, you know, they got her help and, and, you know, it wasn't a bad thing. 
it was a good thing. She feels great, you know, and she has friends and her friends know that she goes too. And so if you just keep it and normalize the conversation, um, I know Shanti's had some celebrities do videos that have talked about it. You know, I remember Nick Cannon did one. Mm -hmm. um, you, she recently, we'll talk about Yay Wellness in a minute, but she recently spoke to Charlemagne the God. If you don't know, Charlemagne talked about how he had really bad anxiety and wrote a book about it even. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just that, you know, if we can get the people that everyone looks up to to talk about these things, then hopefully everyone else will realize it's not that big of a deal and that, you know, this is something that everybody in their life probably goes through. It's just mm -hmm. some people deal with it in a different way. Exactly. Yeah. So what came, what made you come up with Yay Wellness? So it's actually Yay yeah Wellness. Why yeah, well, sorry. Um, no, that's okay. Um, so it was pr a little bit over a week ago. I was, it was a Saturday. I was having my own moment of um, stress and anxiousness. And I was like, oh Lord, you know, the foundation is running on limited funds. All of my speaking engagements, which I, you know, I'm a paid speaker on the side now and grateful to be able to go out and share all of those got canceled, you know, like everybody else, everybody's gigs is getting canceled and musicians concerts are getting canceled. And I was like, what am I going to do um, a for money and B to even still have a voice, right. And to use my platform. And so, you know, I prayed about it for a while and then I just sat quiet in my room and I just listened to, you know, um, my spiritual voices that I feel like talk to me when I allow them to, if I can just sit myself still <laughs> and take it all in. And I just, I was like, wellness, wellness. And, and God was just like, you know, let's figure this out. Let's go into a brainstorming session. And I literally got on Instagram and started checking hashtags that had the word wellness in them. And I was like, well, this is taken, that's taken, that take, that's taken. And I was like, it's all about saying yes to wellness. And so got on Google and I was like, well, what's another word for yes? It's yeah, Y-E-A-H. And that, you know, hashtag hadn't been used. So I went and registered the hashtag and got the website domain. And, you know, I'm going to trademark the name now. And, you know, one thing led to another. And I literally, I, I had a young lady who does graphic work for me. I was like, hey, let's, I, this is the logo I want. I want it to look like a chat bubble. I want to go live on IG, da, 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 da. And, Literally within five hours, I had a new brand. Love it. Logo, Love it. new brand. And then I just started texting folks that I thought, I was like, hey, well, I got to get some guests. Now that I have my own show, like Dr. Renee, I need to get some guests. <laughs> so I literally texted Charlemagne that evening and I was wondering, I'm like, oh my God, this is, he's gonna probably gonna be like, what, girl? He was like, yeah, sure, of course. <laughs> I was like, really? And literally did it that next, like that, following day or no like that monday so this was a saturday so we went live monday and i've been going ever since and so you know we've had uh charlemagne the actress tisha campbell we had cynthia bailey um who is you know model extraordinaire and on real housewives of atlanta we had uh, june ambrose who everyone who loves Aunt Tegan. hello an amazing fashion stylist and icon um monday we had uh dondre whitfield who has been on everything from, you know, the Cosby show to all my children is now on queen sugar and he's an author. He has this, um, new book coming out, um, called, uh, male versus man, which is amazing. You guys should pre-order. I mean, we've just had so many people. I mean, yesterday she had Erica. Yeah. And, Mary and Mary. We had Erica Campbell from Mary and Mary. That was so powerful. Um, yeah. and then we had, um, flex and Shawnee's and today I'm yeah. talking to Chris Weber. We have to move up the time for 15 minutes because Chris has a, a work conference call at four. So I'll be logging on at 315 to talk to former NBA player and TNT uh, sports announcer Chris Weber. And then tomorrow I have Candy Burris. Um, on Monday, uh, I have the artist Lecrae, who's a gospel hip hop artist. On Tuesday, I have Estelle. On Wednesday, I have Karen Civil. On Thursday, I have D1 of next week. I mean, God is just so good. And his, <laughs> everybody's been like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. And I'm like, really? And all it is is just a check in. It's a it's a wellness check in. Um, again, you know, you mentioned you know if 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 our artists and celebrities and athletes and people that we look up to will be open to talking about emotional health and wellness, then hopefully um, the community at large will be okay with it. And so we're off to the races and we're running and like 
now I've been utilizing this time to like, we're going to have yeah wellness merchandise and different things that's going to come once we can get back out the house. And, and of course, you know, yeah, wellness um, is my personal brand, but we're tying it in with silence of shame and we're going to do a lot of mashups there. Um, Cause May is mental health awareness month and May 5th is national silence of shame day. Who my hair is looking a little crazy. Um, my, it's, my flyaways are coming out. My body is not working, but, um, <laughs> But May 5th is National Silence to Shame Day, and it's going to be an opportunity for us to raise awareness and raise funds for our organization, as well as, you know, just talking about mental health. So I'm super excited about what's to come. Yes. And I've been getting on her because everyone knows, you know, live streaming is my thing. And so I told her she's got to get on YouTube because all of these IG lives are great. But oh, so guess what? I took your advice. We now have a Yeah Wellness YouTube page. And I have transferred all of the live videos awesome. to my computer. Thank you very much. And they will be uploaded this week so that now everybody can see the conversations. Yes. So that's what I was going to say. You're welcome. The Everyone mentee knows. The mentor. Huh? I said it's the mentee helping the mentor. <laughs> <laughs> so what you if you don't want follow, if you're not an Instagram person, Instagram lives usually last for 24 hours and that is it. Mm -hmm. So it is upon you to get those so that you can repurpose them yeah. and I mean never reinvent the wheel. You've done the done the work, so now keep using the work. So we're gonna put them over on YouTube and I hope everyone will subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'll make sure I have the information so you can click and do that. Because uh, if you don't know already, although I've said it a million times, you have to have a thousand subscribers on YouTube and 4,000 watched hours and 365 days to get paid on YouTube. And of course, we want her to get paid for her work because she is really helping out the greater community. So um, anyone have any questions for us, please type them in. I actually am able to see um, see what's posted, what's coming up here. Uh, and you know what? I am. Um, I fixed this thing. Uh -oh. And it's not right. OK, so wait, you can't share and I can't see the questions where I'm supposed to see them. One second. This is why I need my executive producer, my sister. But right, I'm going to eat a few of my nuts while you get that. Yeah, fine. So my sister. Wait, let me just tell everybody. So it's important that we hydrate and that we eat. So I'm eating my heart healthy mix. Because, yeah, wellness is all about mind, body, and soul, and business. So from the body side, I'm trying to do good, Dr. Renee, and not overdo it. So this is a, a little snack before my lunch. Yeah. So um, I just fixed it. But my sister is still working, unfortunately. So I don't even know if she's logged on. I didn't see her. But I fixed it. Everyone, please like and share. If you're watching from my personal page, now you can like and share. Um, on Ask Dr. Renee, of course, you already could. We are live, Shanti, on LinkedIn, YouTube, Periscope, and both of my Facebook pages. Wow. Yes. So I need we to are, hire you. <laughs> what'd you say? I need to hire you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, look, I, I gave, look, I, you, you said it. She told me that I need, what I told her was a webinar. So <laughs> I'm already supplying information. I, I give you all the information I have. But um, but yeah, so everyone, if you have any questions, please feel free to type those in. I now can see them on the, on the computer screen. Um, and Erica, Dr. Erica said you are the queen of mental health resources. Aw, thank you. <laughs> so I'm my passionate about this work, Dr. Erica. Um, I don't know. It's weird. It's like a kid in the candy store. And I'm constantly trying to like Google and find current, you know, resources for all communities and so forth. So people like you and doctors like yourself that you guys are on the front line as well, although you're not like at hospitals um, treating COVID, you know, so many people at the hospitals need help and support. And so yes. all of our psychiatrists and, and psychologists are on the front lines as well. So I honor you guys and thank you for the work that you're doing. And, and it's, a, it's an honor um, for me to just be able to support you guys, right? Because like, you guys are out there doing the work and then you got somebody like me just kind of with my pom-poms like mental health, mental health and trying to help, you know, to make you guys jobs easier. So thank you. So my friend Veronica um, said, is there a website for EA Wellness or should we just follow the hashtag? So for now, there is an Instagram page for Yeah Wellness and also follow the hashtag. Um, we are working on building out the Facebook platform. Again, as we mentioned on YouTube, it will be Yeah Wellness. Um, so you can view the videos there. So 
it's coming together. It's we're only what a week and a half in. Right. <laughs> so I'm still trying to build this brand out. But if, if you are on Instagram, you know, please follow. I just posted it. It. Yeah, I posted okay. the link. So um, so yeah, and the now I will tell you though, her Instagram live that she spoke about today at 3 15 Eastern Standard Time is on her page, which is definitely in the links um in the box for YouTube and um and uh, I think LinkedIn too. But it is uh Shanti Das. 404. If you know anything about Atlanta, you know that's the area code. So <laughs> Shanti Das 404. That is her Instagram, and that's where she does the interviews. Um, so you can actually still go see the one with Erica right now, too. Well, then, it'll, be up um, today. it'll be up today. But it's still on my page. Yeah, okay. You're right. So, it's still on my Instagram. That's what I'm saying. It's still there right. for another few hours. So right. um, so yeah, and then she's gonna upload them to a YouTube page, which is probably the same name, correct? Correct. Oh, you know what? You have to have 100 subscribers before you can have a custom URL. But you can um, Google it. Did you know that? I, I told you I'm, I'm a learning girl as I go. You do okay, but living. Yeah, but you know what, though? I will tell you, whenever we're together, that girl posts her stuff so timely. I am jealous. Her stuff is posted and I'm tagged and we walk in and I'm like, oh, I'm like, how would she do that so fast? It takes me weeks to. Post. I'm quick to the draw, girl. Yeah. I, when I tell you, I'm quick. I'm like, oh, let me get this picture. Let me post this because it's like you know, it, it's like a fleeting moment, right in time. And 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 because it's so much information, and I think um, from a community and global perspective, we're all inundated with information. Everything is instantaneous, and so. Uh, what I will say, that if anyone is starting a brand or trying to like build up your profile, especially utilizing social media, you got to take, you know, uh, full advantage of the moments, quote unquote. Right. Right. And right. you don't want to miss the moment. And so I, if there's something really awesome happens today. Yeah, I can post hashtag late post the next day or a couple of days later. But how awesome is it sometimes being able to capture it in the moment? Now, the only thing I will say to that is don't like. Uh, use those moments so like you miss the moment either, right? If that makes sense. Um, so enjoy yourself, and then after you finish doing what you're doing, then you post because you don't want to miss the moment, right? From a, a, a connectivity perspective, with right? Who you're with physically, but then from a social media perspective, you don't want to also miss the moment so that it becomes old news, yeah. So, yeah, so she she is on it. Her that's why her Instagram game, she has 40,000 followers on Instagram, that's why it's so tight because I. I struggle. 44,700. <laughs> Thank you oh, to all my news. me. I picked up with you for this week. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so she is killing it on Instagram. I am still crawling. But my first TikTok that I shared with you guys at the top of the show, I actually have over a thousand views. I'm very excited. That's amazing. Okay. I'm not on TikTok. I just posted it. Today's Thursday. I posted it Tuesday, very late at night, probably Wednesday morning. So I'm really excited that it does have so many views. And I have to shout out the, um, I believe she's 16. Don't let me get this wrong, but Malaya Tribble, who is the daughter of my friend Tasha Scott, mm -hmm. she is the one that helped me. <laughs> she's like, no, Dr. Renee, you can do it. And I'm like, no, I can't. That's awesome. I, I, I got to do it. I hadn't done it yet. She's like, send me the video. I'll do the, the, um, the text for you. I had it typed out what I needed to say. I'm a Virgo, I planned. So I had it typed out. I just didn't know how to do it. So, but the two of us together, I figured out how to do it. So now I'm going to try and keep posting. So please make sure you follow me on TikTok. I really would appreciate it. I need to increase my numbers um, so that that can be another. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and download that app today and I'll okay. make you. Awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. So, um, so. Like I said, if you guys have any other questions, Veronica, I think we got yours. Any other questions, please let me know. I should see them. And um, so you so you have to tell the story of how you left the industry, even though you said it on the other show. But how did you know how and why you ended up leaving the industry? Because I will say, Shanti has been high, high, high positions at record labels. As a matter of fact, when Erica was on yesterday, the reason why they knew each other is because Shanti worked with her at Columbia Records on her, on one of her albums, on one of the Mary Mary albums. So most people are like, oh, well you, you know, had huge expense accounts. You were VIP at the Diddy party, the J party, the Beyonce, you know, all this stuff. Why in God's name would you leave? I know, I know. And I still have my moments and I'm like, 
okay, Lord, I'm, I'm trusting you, but ooh, I'm missing, you know, all the, the glitz and the glamour. But no, on a serious note, um, you know, it had just, life happened, Dr. Renee. Um, I would say probably from 2008 to into 2009, things just started getting really stressful for me uh, living in New York City. I was executive vice president of marketing at Universal Motown. Um, my mom was in early stages of dementia. We didn't know what was going on. And I felt bad that like my sister and brother were back down south and they were dealing with it. And here I am with this wonderful, great life and traveling around the world. And mom is going through this. And I'm like, that's not fair on my siblings to have to deal with all of this. And, you know, again, rest in peace to my sister. But we wouldn't have been able to do it um, had she not really stepped up. Um, as she did with everything in our family. So there was that. Um, it, you know, the industry can be toxic at times in, in some of the work environments. So, you know, you add that on top of it. Again, I was just homesick. I felt like I was missing quality family functions, even, you know, things like, you know, my nephews or nieces, you know, games or birthday parties or things that I couldn't always get to um, living from New York to, um, and, and they were all in Georgia. Just a lot of stuff. Um, and then my uncle, you know, passed away um, in 2009, who was really close to me. And he kind of helped to raise me when my dad died. That really was a huge, huge blow for me that year. So I started flying back home a lot. And it's funny, I would, my cousin, she would always say like, isn't this your flight leaving right now? So like, I would hang out with her and stay with her for like two days. And I would go, you know, I'm just gonna change that flight and leave Monday. So then it became a pattern though, because, and I just still didn't know that I was depressed or anxious. I remember going into the office, telling my assistant like, I ain't taking no calls. I'm locking the door. Don't call me unless it's my boss. Um, and I was never that person. I'm a happy-go-lucky person, love life, love my job, and love what I did. But being able to go to work and just not be happy anymore, that wasn't cool. And then one day I was driving, I was riding rather in a taxi <clears throat> from Midtown Manhattan up to Harlem for something for work. And I remember, Dr. Renee, my entire right side went numb. Couldn't feel my arm, couldn't feel my leg. I'm sitting here going, okay, what's really happening right now? And of course it was frightening. So I went in and I, I literally went to four doctor's offices in one day <clears throat> after that. And I got MRIs done, CAT scans. Um, I remember getting this, uh, oh, it was so painful. The spinal tap procedure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> And I ended up getting a spinal headache, which is very rare. When a lot of people get the test, they don't end up getting the headache. It is the worst headache I've ever experienced in my entire life. And ironically, my sister had gotten the same test done before because um, we share some um, some issues um, with our legs and everything. So anyway, <clears throat> she was like, oh, my God, I hope you don't get the spinal headache. Well, I got it. And she was so mad at me because I drove myself home from the doctor. But most of my, I only had a, I could count on one hand, you know, real close friends in that area. And she was like, you know what? It's time to come home. She was like, this is ridiculous. And so after that, you know, I had gotten diagnosed with cervical spinal stenosis, which is where a lot of the fluid wasn't properly getting to some of the vertebrae in um, my neck, you know, in the spinal area in my neck. And they thought I needed surgery. And so <clears throat> my boss was very supportive. But then I started thinking that we were going to do surgery in New York and family and friends were going to fly in and take weeks and, you know, for recovery. And my sister was like, well, why don't you just come home if you're going to do the surgery? So one thing led to another where I was like, it's just time to come home. And so I quit. I walked away from an extremely uh, six, large six figure salary, lucrative career, Range Rover, corner office, all of that. And I just never looked back. And I'd be lying if I said I didn't have my moments of like, did I do the right thing? But, you know, I did what I had to do. And it's funny, like even going through all of that, God placed community service on my heart. So one of the very last things that I did before I walked away from the company, it was one night that I was just at the office and I was kind of online just scrolling and surfing the web. And I came across this article on CNNMoney.com and it was about the city of Detroit and how they had lost a lot of their funding that went to the morgues. Sounds a little morbid, but I, you know, I was reading this article and as I got deeper into it. I saw like 
body bags stacked up in the morgue. And I was like, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> you didn't mean to tell me like families don't even, they don't, they don't have the money and the city can't afford to cover either a cremation or burial, proper burial service. Like I was mortified. So I got literally that night, I stayed at work for three hours and I started <clears throat> Again, you know, my marketing <laughs> brain. Yep. I started this movement called Maybe Rest in Peace. And I got like, I sent out a long letter to all my colleagues in the business and I started getting donations in. I raised um, $6,000 in like a week. And then we buried six people. And then I raised another 24000 So I raised a total of $30,000 just in a couple weeks and buried. And we were able to bury and or cremate 30 people. And I'll never forget the gentleman who was running the morgue said, like, you guys really helped to put a huge dent in in what, you know, was an unfortunate situation. And we were able to bring some dignity back to a lot of the folks in Detroit. And that's when I knew, like, you know, all that I've done that was great in music, there's a bigger calling on my life. And if God was able to, you know, get Kid Rock and Akon and Busta Rhymes and all these people to support me, you know, from a charitable perspective, maybe there was more that I could start doing. And that's why, like, even when I moved back, I started, like, just doing these small charity projects because I loved it. And I felt like, wow, this is a, a really great way to, to to use your talents, you know, in other ways. And I just fell in love with doing, you know, service work for others. So Teddy Riley was a guest of the show, and he talked about how he helped out with the um, no reservations needed. Yeah. When she fed, she feeds lots of people at Thanksgiving time, and she's been able to get other people to help her. And Teddy talked about how he loved that as well. Yeah, he did it with us for like three years. Teddy yeah. Riley, um, super producer, was like um, my, um, I guess, partner, if you will, in the mm -hmm. no reservations needed event when he lived here in Atlanta. And yeah, love, shout out to Teddy. Love you, Teddy. Yes, Teddy is the best. Um, there was something else you said in there I wanted to say. Um, okay. Oh, I know. So there are some people from Atlanta because they said something that are watching. Okay. If you have ever been to ATL Live in the park, that is one of Shanti's babies as well. So, um, so that, and RB Live New York, I was a co founder yes. of that too. So yeah, I and I actually was in Atlanta one time when she had it. So I was able to attend one of that one of those. Um, and so it's a great event if you've never been. It was a wonderful event. Thank um, you. We did it for ten years. Last year was our last season, but yeah. who knows? We might have some pop ups here and there. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it was great live music. And actually, she ended up on uh, the Real Housewives of Atlanta. I think Kay Michelle was performing, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We actually, I think we did two episodes with okay. them another show but yeah we're grateful for all the people that supported atl live it was a good time 10 year run not too bad not at all not at all so yeah so she um so she still dabbles in music i'm like a, a jamaican bit. guys i um, have like i said i'm like a jamaican i have like 13 jobs you know we, we joke about it but you know when you're um on your own I mean, now I work for the foundation, but, you know, I still have to make money on the side. And so I'm always trying to come up with ways, you know, to create uh, additional revenue streams. And I think now more so than ever with us dealing with COVID-19, you know, we really understand like, you know, because I, if I had to look back at my younger self and tell the younger Shanti anything, it would be to save more money. And I know it's difficult sometimes for anybody to save because you're living check to check and you're just trying to pay the bills. Right. Right. Made a, the rent, keep the lights on, keep food, um, you know, on the table for you and your family. So I get that, um, not being insensitive to that in any form of fashion. But if you are afforded a great um, job uh, with a really good salary, put some money away. And I hate that I didn't save as much money um, as I did. I was just young and dumb and enjoying life. Um, but now, again, with COVID nineteen, I'm realizing like. We all need emergency funds. So even if it's twenty dollars per paycheck, like you know, I had some plumbing issues at the house this week, and it was one issue on Monday, and then something else happened yesterday, and here I am four hundred fifty dollars later. That's a lot of money. And again, I don't make the same money I used to, so I have a different appreciation and respect for money. And so I'm having to make sure, like, I do things differently. And so I'm trying to create, you know, even through this, I'm trying to find the silver lining of, of how can I monetize things or 
monetize my platform and create other revenue streams like yourself. Like you're trying to do, you know, so much with YouTube and being able to be paid from YouTube and Facebook through ads. Like um, if you do have any downtime, like try to figure out, you know, um, what other revenue streams you can create for yourself once we can kind of get back to some place of normalcy. Right. And that um, Lisa Nichols was a guest of the show and she talked about the average millionaire has seven streams of income. So I Can you say that again. Lisa Nichols said the average millionaire has seven streams of income. I love it. So I try to adhere to that That's as right. best I can. Um, anyone who knows me knows I am the cheapest human being on the planet. <laughs> and um, my sister was like, I don't think you can get me cheaper. Though, so I don't know what we're making do. <laughs> but um, I post and I talk about all the time. I have all sorts of apps on my phone that make money while I don't even think about it. I may leave purchases at the, any purchases I make at the grocery store, I make money off of. My Amazon, I make purchases, make money off of. I make money off of everything that I do. Do you have huh? like the cashback cards or how do you, you know, sync up your- No, I don't do credit, I don't do credit cards. I am totally a cash and ca cash, well, debit cards is what I have. I don't have any um, credit cards. So it's different apps that, um, it's kind of like the old school rebates, but they're actually mm -hmm. electronic. Okay. So, of course, you know, Ebates renamed itself to Rakuten. So that's one. I don't even use that one that much because I love Rakuten, but they only pay you once every quarter, I think, is the payoffs oh, or something. Right? So you have to wait a while. Yeah, and I'm impatient. So <laughs> Ibotta is my favorite one that does the same thing. And Ibotta, as soon as you get $25, you can take it out. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. So I usually set a goal and I'm like, okay, well, I want to buy a ticket to such and such. And this is how much I know it's going to cost. So I'll just use it. You know, I'll just create it, you know, let it add up and add up until yeah. that amount. And then I'll just, and they'll put it in Venmo, PayPal. You can buy gift cards with it, whatever you want. Awesome. Yeah. And then I have another app where literally any store I go to, just walking in the store, I get points. Mm -hmm. And these points turn into gift cards. So I always tell people I can't afford Starbucks, but if I get these points, I can get a Starbucks gift card that could then buy me my latte. There you go. So I'm not spending my own money. Um, and then I use Acorn and Acorn. Every time I use my debit card, it invests my money for me mm -hmm. and saves my money. And so it's it multiplies pretty quickly over there. Yeah, you got to send me those too. Yes, I will. I will post the link in the um, chat. And the um, and then there's another one. It's another. It's a debit card, but it does the same thing. It'll invest as you spend stashed. Mm -hmm. So there's all sorts of apps that I use that even while I'm sitting here quarantined, I can still make some money because I have still had to call Amazon for some things. And, you know, um, cause even if I, the other day I didn't go to the grocery store, I did Amazon prime now because it was just easier for them to deliver the groceries than for me to go get them. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, there's all sorts of ways to just try and save here and, you know, and pinch here and even your children that are in college and have debit cards they can also do the same. And then the other thing that I've talked about with this whole COVID-19, the stock market, you can buy stocks from your phone. Yeah. And now some of the apps, you don't even have to buy a full share. You can buy a portion of the share. So you're not even spending the 100 or 200. Exactly. You can buy, you know, a third of it or whatever, you know, so you're not, you're only spending maybe $5 instead of, you know, a larger amount. So these are all things that you guys should definitely look into if you have those are all great tips. Are you putting yeah. those in your notes too so everybody can see those? Yes, yes. Well, on the YouTube, the link is already there. I will put because I I'm bad at memorizing this link, but I'm gonna I'll find the link and I'll I'll put it in, in okay. the uh, comments. But um but yeah so any parting words at this time that is so crazy for all of us to make sure that we get through this and get on the other side of this. Um, yesterday, we talked to my friend, Soka Mom, who has kids, and so she talked about what she's doing with her children. They're teenagers, but still, you know, this is still a shock to their systems. So as, you know, single nistas as we are, we have words of wisdom on how we can mentally- I love that. Did you coin that phrase? No, I didn't. Somebody else did, I think. Oh, yeah, that's I, cute. I like it. <laughs> Okay, so what I would say, um, my friends over at the American Psychiatric Association Foundation, um, they sent me um, a PDF also um, kind of around uh, workplace mental health, um, working remotely through COVID-19. And one of the main things that they talk about is um, keeping a regular schedule. 
I know that's hard to do. Like for me, the last few nights, for whatever reasons, I've been like up, you know, late. I might take a nap around 9, 30 or 10, but then I'm up by one and I'm up for a couple hours. But, you know, I'm trying to make sure <clears throat> that I, I maintain some sense of a normal schedule. So I try to wake up, you know, get dressed, um, take a shower, eat my breakfast. I mean, I'm a definitely a breakfast person. A lot of people aren't, but I love breakfast and I can't really get my day going without it. Um, it's also a good time to maybe exercise and incorporate some sort of wellness into that um, that morning period. And then you start your day. Um, I have been now utilizing um, kind of like this little nook for my home office space. And that's been good because prior to COVID-19, days where I would work from home, I was just like on the sofa doing it. And it, it wasn't productive. And I'm like, OK, let me get back into the groove of utilizing my home office trying to eat lunch around lunchtime, taking a break for myself. Um, if you have kids or have family members, you know, they're with you, you know, scheduling 30 minute breaks for you guys. Um, and, and during some of those breaks, you know, if you do have kids, you know, put the phone down for a minute, right? Utilize this time to reconnect with one another. Um, Cause I, I promise you, I, there's been times where I've been out at dinner prior to all this happening and I'll see the whole family at the dinner table, out or either in the house, and everybody's on the phone. I see the in houses too. My own family, right. right? Stop. We got a time out on that. We got to reconnect with one another. Learn how. Learn these interpersonal skills. Learn how to talk to one another again and be present in the moment. Um, the other thing I think that's really important is to limit media consumption. Um, don't get me wrong; it's extremely important to stay up to date on what's going on in your your local um, cities and states and so forth. Um, and from a federal government perspective on COVID nineteen, but limit that. That you don't want to have a twenty four hour news cycle in your house or on your phone. That's enough to stress anybody out, right? So kind of avoid the continuous exposure. Um, that's one thing that the APAF says. Also um, setting boundaries on work schedules, um, getting creative and sharing tips with other coworkers or friends. So if you find something that's like, working really well for you um, within your home, um, as we deal with this, share with others, whether it's a post or a phone call, let people know best practices and what's working for you. Um, the other thing, like you mentioned, is staying connected. Um, even though we can't have that physical interaction, um, connectivity is still extremely important for our emotional health and wellness. So utilizing FaceTime um, on your computer or on your smartphones, um, Zoom, as you mentioned, is great. Uh, we did a virtual happy hour on Zoom the other day. Also, one of my really good friends, KP, who's one of my, uh, he's a friend, but he's a former music colleague. We had a Zoom birthday party for him. So we're seeing a lot of those pop up, which are really amazing. Um, there's another one called Join Me, um, and, and oh, Marco Polo is another really cool app. You can create little mini communities within Marco Polo, and then you guys send yourselves video updates. So all that kind of stuff is good. Again, eating um, as much as you can um, from a healthy perspective, because um, you are what you eat. So if if our bodies are intaking too much foods that are high in sugar, it's going to weigh us down. Sometimes it could cause us to become depressed. Um, and the other thing is, you know, don't use, um, you know, recreational drugs as a crutch through this, because a lot of times people will self-medicate because they just, you know, I'm tired of dealing with, you know, Corona. I just, I don't want to think about it anymore. Well, okay. But you, you want to have healthy coping mechanisms, right? Um, if you have a glass of wine or a cocktail with a friend, you know, keep it to that one social drink. But, you know, when I was dealing with my own depression and suicidal ideation, I know for a fact that when I had, you know, more than two drinks, it started playing with my emotional health and wellness and alcohol is a normal depressant. So you don't want to pick up bad habits while we're in this pandemic um, that could lead to further stress and anxiety. And um, one thing we didn't mention is April is stress awareness month. And so um, we want to make sure that we're paying close attention to how to manage your stress and wellness. And you can Google, you know, stress uh, awareness month and go to, you know, sites like WebMD or the CDC and all these other great organizations. And they have a lot of really good information on how to notice the signs and symptoms of stress, how to deal with it, and how also stress can manifest itself into physical health challenges as well as emotional health challenges. So it really is mind, body, and soul. Yeah, well, it's mind, body, soul business, right? Yes. So stay well. Um, follow me on Instagram at ShantiDoss404. Follow our movement at Silence the Shame. Silence the Shame also has a podcast with over 40 episodes up of amazing content 
on Google Play, SoundCloud, and iTunes. Um, also, the Yale Wellness check-ins are every day at 3.30 p.m. on my Instagram live, ShantiDoss404. Today is the only day we're doing it at 3.15 with Chris Weber. Um, so hashtag Yale Wellness. And remember to just check on your friends and loved ones. Um, you know, we're all in this together. So, you know, I know even for some, it's scary going out to the grocery store now. So if you have a friend that lives alone or might be sick or dealing with some other physical ailments or mental ailments, um, if you go to a grocery store and they need something, you don't have to see them. Just take the bag and leave it at their doorstep, you know, or do something kind for someone or just just love one another and be kind because this is affecting the world. This is a global pandemic, um, but we will get through it together. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for your time today. And everyone, definitely let's check out the IG live this afternoon and show some love and definitely follow her on everything. Let's bump up her YouTube. Let's get it, you know, going so that she can get her uh, customized URL right away. And um, thank you so much. Tomorrow we will do the um, coronavirus update that Dr. Kelly and I have been doing for the last three weeks. So tomorrow will be the fourth one. And next week we have Dr. Cindy Duke coming. And I think Paul Carrick Brunson is going to make an appearance too. So I will check you out with check you guys later and thank you. Have a great day. Today's thankful Thursday. So let's all just be thankful that we are still here. And for those of us that have our health, let's be thankful we have our health and let's pray for those that are still recovering from the pandemic or whatever else issues they have. Thank you so much. Don't forget to live life you deserve. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.